I'll, I'll quickly do the merge command now. Uh, or, or let me let me show you what's in the master branch now. If I do get checkout master, so now I'm in master, and yeah. So in my master branch, that that line that I deleted is still there. So if you remember, I I I created that branch and I deleted that line. But in, in my uh, master branch, it's still there. So I can bring those changes into my master branch by doing git merge and then the branch name. So it was my branch. So in this case, it was, a, it was a fairly trivial change. So git does it automatically for you. And anything like this, it will handle just fine. And, and now if I, if I look at the source code file, now it, it's, it's current with the branch. With all the changes in the branch, and in the diagram we see that the master branch and my branch they point to the same uh, commit. So everything is synchronized. And uh, once uh, once you've you've done the merge, you can just delete the branch if you don't want it in the history. But yeah, it's it's your choice. And uh, now this was all local when you're working alone. What if you want to work on create um, you know a, a repository a shared repository that you want to work with friends on? So you can create a free account on GitHub and then just follow instructions to create a new repository. So I'm, I'm signed into my account. I just say create a new repository and just give it a name. And optional description is public. If you want a private repository, you're gonna have to pay. So I'm just gonna do this. And create. What this will do is just create a blank repository, something similar to doing git init on your machine. So they did something like this on their machine. They created a blank repository. And now what you're going to do is you're going to connect your repository with their repository. So, uh, I'll go back. So this is this is the command that makes that connection. So all all remote versions of the repository they are called remotes. And each remote has a name. And by convention, the main, like the main repository is called origin, because uh, they say that that's where you, say you you clone somebody else's work. So that's that's the origin of your work. And now you're gonna communicate, you're gonna refer to that repository as origin. You can create another one with a different name and synchronize all of them. That's uh, that's how you do it. And GitHub gives you a URL for a repository. You just paste it here. And this statement would add the repository and the push command would. This is my repository URL. Conveniently put it in a box. So I, I, I didn't give it a name. So I'm going to give it the name origin because that's the convention for your main remote. I mean, you could give it any name and you can have many such repositories, that's fine. So once it's added... No. So, okay, so, so you have your local copy of the repository. It has its own branches. The remote would also have its own branches. So if... Uh, so when, when you're referring to branches on the remote, you would say origin slash remote. Mm -hmm. And origin is, is just like, it's kind of a, a just a, a short name for the, for the remote, you know. That, that's how it manages your connections. It, it, you need to give a short name and you have to add it as a remote. Now it knows about it, now it can communicate with it and do all kinds of stuff. But we might be able to see this. Uh, if I if I go into that repository, currently it, it's empty. You know, it, it's got nothing. I can the, uh, so the commit command that we were using earlier that commits only to the local copy of the repository. If you want to synchronize with the remote, you need to use the push command. Get push and the remote name. So I'm gonna sync it with origin, and it's gonna ask you your username and password. Uh, oh yeah, I need to specify the branch name. So 
I, I'm on the master branch in my local repository. I need to specify to which branch I'm going to commit to on the remote, and it has to be the same. Uh, or a new branch, I mean, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure on that, but yeah. So you have to specify which branch on the remote you're going to commit to. Is there a way to specify uh, Push all branches. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I don't think so. I mean, I, I was, there was some kind of an upstream option, but I, I'm not 100% sure how to use it. Let's, you know. So now, yeah, so it compares the file. Huh? Okay. Alright. Okay. So there is a switch to do that. And now if I reload my repository, so here is my source code. And now the other developers can just take this URL and clone this repository on their machine and they'll be able to access the code, make changes to it, publish it back here, and I can pull those changes back in. So yeah, like I was saying, remote is just like an alias for the remote repository. You can have multiple remotes. And some people uh, create a remote on a, on a removable disk for backups. So you just, you have your own like repository backup system. And uh, pushing updated the remote repository. Uh, so what your friend, your other developer is going to do is he's going to create a, a GitHub account for himself, con install uh, msys git and everything on his machine, configure it with the username and email. But he doesn't have to create the repository. He's going to copy, clone the repository that you have on Origin. And the thing is, since it's a public repository, anybody in the world can clone your code, the whole repository, with all its history. Uh, but they cannot write changes back to it. They will not be able to issue the push command. But if you add them to uh, collaborators in, in, in the admin menu, they, they get that ability. So uh, this new guy, let's, let's say this is on, on a Linux machine here. So he's going to do get clone and then the address. So it didn't even ask for my password because for reading a public repository, there is no access. Point. But you have options for that. You know, this is just because it's free. That's why you you're not allowed. And if I go to that folder, so the source code is here, and I can do git status, and I can do git log, and I can see all the changes that I made from that machine. They're right there. You know, each and every piece of history. And. So what clone did was it, it automatically added, a, you know, we did that, we added the remote named origin. The clone command or kind of automatically does that for you. It creates that origin and points it to the URL that you specified. And if you don't like entering your password, there's an option to cache. Uh, I don't know that. And you can also upload your public key to your GitHub account. Then again, it, it doesn't ask for your password anymore. So I can... Uh, Maybe make a change to the hello world file again. And then I can commit those changes. But uh, I won't be able to push it yet if I try to do this. I mean, and I have another account uh, I just made for this. Uh, yeah. But it'll 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 deny because uh, I don't have access to it. So you can go the, the user who made the repository. You can go to the admin tab, and there's uh, collaborators. You can add the name of the person you you want to allow to make changes. So once I do that, I should be able to write to the repository.
now it was able to push that change and if I, if I refresh, if I go back to the repository, so uh, you can see the, the change made by the other user is here. And now on my Windows machine, I can, I mean my code is still what I had before. If I want to see, uh, pull in those changes, there's this command, get pull origin. It's, it's, it's going to connect to the repository and and it has updated all the source code by the look. Uh, oh, again. Okay, I should specify the branch too. So I want to pull the master branch. And it says that the file hello world.ctp was changed and here is the change. So this is how you would just keep on doing those things. And um, in most cases, you'll be working on separate functions. There won't be any conflict. But if for some reason you both decide to work on the same lines, then uh, Git is going to uh, say it. there's a merged conflict and it'll, it'll keep code from both of you and put special markers on those lines. And then you can go back and manually fix those conflicts. So on the remote on the Linux machine, I made some changes, committed them to my local repository, then I pushed them to GitHub. Then on my Windows machine, I, I was able to pull those changes back. There's another command called fetch. Again, it's not nothing to uh, worry about too much if you're just doing some basic synchronization stuff. You don't have to uh, worry much about that. But fetch downloads the remote repository into your local so your your local repository is up to date but the the source code files that you have it doesn't change them for you you have to i mean you decide whether you want to include those changes in your working copy or not so that's something you might you might want to do but i think most of the time you end up using pulled and like i said you can have more than one uh, remote so there is my local local branch with the local master the origin branch maybe on GitHub, and that has its own master. And I have another remote called this, and it has its own master. And uh, we can see that this is like two commits, you know, ahead. So you might want to update your code by pulling that that repository. And it can be any location. It could be a backup drive. And uh, now, uh, if you don't want to use GitHub, you want to uh, do your own uh, server. Like you have, you don't want to pay, or and you still want a private repository. You can uh, on a Linux server in which all of your collaborators have access. You can create a bare repository. So uh, in an empty folder, it just initialize something and then add it as a remote on your development machines, and then you can push and pull. Uh, you will have to set up access control because, I mean, Linux is very strict about it. You have to make that folder shared and add add all the users to a group and do all kinds of things. With, I mean, if you, if you know Linux administration, you can do that. Or uh, you can use uh, a, a ready-made tool like Gitolite, Gitolite or Gitosis, and they automatically do this for you. And yeah, that's everything. Yeah. thing that I wanted to show you all is that it's not just for source code. So even if you're working on your on, your, on a Word document, so uh, you know Word has this track changes feature, but say you don't you don't even have to turn that on for this to work. So you can you can create a document, you can make changes to it, and you know if if, if it's if, if if you have I have this file in Git. And in version control. So, what it can do is, what Tortoise Git can do is, I mean, I don't, I don't think that uh, any other tool lets you do that. But Tortoise Git can diff Word documents. Uh, I get to create, uh, you know, that track changes features on the fly for you. You can see the changes here. So I added this new line here. You can see that. So, like if you're working on your thesis and you want to, uh, you know. Or like you're writing a book, you can put that in version. I mean, you don't have to use.